most of you have come here today to um, find out about Huntington's and in particular to hear Deborah's very personal account of the impact that it's had on her family. And in listening to her story, it will be impossible for you not to be shocked, saddened and feel huge empathy for Deborah, her mum and her wider family. And there are some terribly traumatic aspects to this um, to her account of how this disability disease has affected her family. When Deborah first told me um, that she gave a lecture to students at a London university to training medical students so that they'd understand the human and the emotional toll of um, hunting disease on not just the patient but also their family. And she explained to me that she did this because it was important to her that she could help people learn and improve the care that was given to families by the medical profession. I thought she was incredibly brave. I later found out, and she drip fed me this information over a number of years, that she'd undertaken many, many expeditions and physical challenges to fundraise to help find a cure for Huntington's disease at Mount Kilimanjaro, the Inca Trail, and <laughs> Machu Picchu, I think I've got that right, the latest one. I thought, not only is she a wonderful lady, she's also a bit mad. And she then started to tell me about all the things that she does on a daily basis, let alone a weekly basis, every month, every year. The voluntary things that she does to bring kindness into other people's lives, the lives of people who are either suffering from Huntington's or who have family members who are suffering. She um, supports by writing diaries and articles, she keeps a blog, and she gives her time very freely and generously and so much of her time to supporting other people, uh, people who in the main she does not know. And then when I found out this lady who I'd already decided was very brave and very wonderful was also writing a book about her experiences, um, which was to both tell the story about her family and their experiences living with Huntington's, and not only did I think she was incredibly brave, but I realised she was very clever too. And then when I read the book, I was quite proud that I knew somebody, and I did say this to her, the first person I've ever known who's written a book, and a fantastic book it is too. Now, aside from all of those things, assisted suicide has been in the media quite a lot recently, and we didn't know, of course, at the time that we asked Deborah to very kindly come and talk to you, that this was going to be so topical. I'm sure you've taught those of you who are studying these sorts of issues in your courses in the last week or two about the storyline on Coronation Street with Hayley Cropper and um, the issues that um, surround that. And I know that Deborah and her family are very keen to support any work that really raises the profile and encourages the debate and that is needed uh, in this country around those sorts of issues. And it will raise different feelings, you know, strong feelings, emotional feelings in some of you as, you, as you're um, sitting here. But the reason I wanted to just introduce Deborah was really to um, re reassure you, I think, that um, although Deborah's story is a very difficult one to listen to, and a difficult one for her to tell, and a very emotional uh, story, the progress is being made with finding um, a cure and progress is being made with the campaigning around the legalisation of assisted suicide. Deborah's story, however, and I don't want to steal the thunder of the book because I know we've bought some copies for the library and some of you will be interested in reading those. Deborah's story hasn't been overshadowed by these issues and again, not wanting to steal her thunder, I hope she'll be able to tell you something about the Hearst story because it's very much a, a life of two halves, it's a book of two halves, it's about the illness that has affected her family so dramatically, but also it's about the lessons she's learned about living life to the full and making every day count. And I think they're one of the best examples of this that I've ever met. So please welcome the very mad, the very brave and the very wonderful Deborah Goodman.